So published research on non-ionizing electromagnetic fields, which is what comes out of your cell phone and wireless devices. And I'm also going to be um, talking about uh, lower frequency radiation that comes out of, say, power lines or uh, uh, electricity, anything that is plugged in, like a charging cell phone, which, um, or laptops, for example, any, any electronic that has a battery or you plug in and charge. And if it's wireless, it emits wireless radiation and also emits uh, a lower frequency, uh, extremely low frequency fields would, from the electricity component of it. So what has been found in the research and published peer reviewed research? Cancer, as I talked about, DNA damage, and not just in the National Toxicology Program, but in research going way, way back uh, for, for years, actually, memory and brain damage. There was a study that was done, and, and there are several studies, both in animals and in humans, that have found this. But more recently, a study that looked at teenagers and found that teenagers who used cell phones for the long term had, oh, I'm sorry, for one year, ah, I'm mixing my, uh, my studies together. It's early in the morning here. <laughs> uh, had uh, more memory damage. And the scientists specifically looked at where the exposure was in their brain, the side of the head they used the phone, and modeled that to see what the exposure was in their brain. And then the test they did on memory corresponded to that area of the brain. And they found damage after one year and several hundred Swiss teenagers. That was a replication study. So when people say there are no replication studies, it's simply not true. There are actually several studies that have been replication studies. Uh, there's also replication studies that have been done on um, cancer promotion, uh, where you have two kinds of exposures in the electromagnetic field paired with a known toxic exposure that's found effects. Um, and there are many studies that corroborate each other, meaning um, they might be slightly different, but they're, you know, we're seeing oxidative stress in, in many, different, uh, many different studies in many different labs around the world. Synergistic effects, I talked a little bit about that with uh, the tumor promotion, but there, there are many studies showing the combination of exposures can potentiate, can increase the effects of the known toxic exposure headaches, uh, people are having acute symptoms from wireless radiation and headaches is the first thing, rashes, dizziness. Um, the list is actually long and people are not able to be in spaces where the wireless radio frequency is elevated. There's oxidative stress, which can lead to a myriad of effects in our body. There was just a, a Swiss review done that by experts, worldwide experts, and this is the, the Swiss, Swiss government's expert group actually asked for this study and found um, the studies, you know, in animal and studies and cell studies showed oxidative stress and that can lead to a myriad of effects. It can potentiate issues that you might already have, everything from cancer to diabetes, um, bees and insects and trees. There's studies showing damage to, um, to trees that are near cell phone, cell, cell phone towers, that, that bees, there are biochemical changes in bees and um, insects, which are gonna be flying around near our cellular networks. The list is long. And just like tobacco, there's firsthand, secondhand, and thirdhand exposures. Firsthand exposures, would be those devices that you have close to your body that you're using, um, the phone, the laptop, uh, whatever you have. And sometimes I see people and they have three devices, especially college students will have at least two at any one time, if not three or four. I was just visiting a college student and I counted 10 wireless devices in a small little dorm room. And that didn't even include the wireless router outside and the uh, cell tower nearby and so forth. Then there's secondhand exposure. That exposure that you receive from those close to you, 
using devices, such as an adult using a laptop or a cell phone right near the, ch the child. And then third hand exposure, that exposure from the ambient uh, involuntary exposure you receive when you're just outside and you're near a cell tower or from all the devices which are in use you know, in, in the community near you that are all connecting to that tower. So I wanna talk about children um, for a while here because I got involved when I had saw, I saw some headlines somewhere and, and I didn't really believe there could be a problem, but I happened to end up on the phone one day after my daughters were in a fire and they were fine, but there were some issues around mercury poisoning from a device that was in the house that potentially they could have inhaled the smoke. And I was on the phone with a doctor. I was on the cell phone in the car a decade ago with the doctor who I'd never talked to, but I knew he was an expert in environmental health. And um, I said to him with the phone against my head as I was driving, so, you know, now that I, we, we assess that my daughters were okay from the, the fire, I said, so do you think there's anything, I mean, should I be concerned about cell phone radiation since I have you on the phone? And he said, very, he was quiet for a second. And he said, I think you should go see what Dr. Deborah Davis of the Environmental Health Trust has to say. She has the latest science. So that's, and I, who had seen that headline about cell, you know, cell phone radiation scrambling a child's brain, that was like the headline. And I, who had gone to our website and thought this can't be true, was just shocked. And now I am executive director of the Environmental Health Trust. Dr. Deborah Davis is our president. She is speaking out on this with other uh, scientists in the field on a regular basis and working hard. And I, um, that's sort of how I got involved with Dr. Davis as I wrote her an email. Please welcome to the 2021 Real Truth. Oh, that's going. So I'm gonna share with you this image from research, which, um, which Dr. Davis and other scientists from uh, Brazil, electrical engineers have done. This is published research showing how children have more wireless radiation absorbed into their brain tissue and into different parts of their, their head compared to adults. And what you're seeing here, before I just show the uh, animation, is imaging that is using supercomputers. The lighter color is showing, this is the wireless radiation coming off the device. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, but it's very much here. And the colors represent the intensity of absorption into the brain tissue. So I'll just show you, this is an animation which actually has been slowed down um, by, by millions of times. And as you can see more of the child's head because they have smaller heads, they have thinner uh, ears, so the phone is not going to be, um, you know, with an adult, the phone has more of a space between the head compared to a child. They also have higher um, water in their brain tissues. So electricity travels in water and it's gonna go quicker and more intensely if there is more water. This is known that mammals, young mammals have more water in their tissues and in their brain tissue. So cell phone radiation um, is more highly and intensely absorbed deeper into the brain of children compared to adults. In addition, children are more vulnerable because they have smaller arms. And when they hold devices, they're closer to their body and more of their body will be exposed to any one device that is near their body compared to an adult. But perhaps most importantly, um, Children have developing brains and the developing brain is far more vulnerable to any environmental insult compared to uh, a brain which is more mature. So there are numerous studies. We have all of this on our website at Environmental Health Trust. 
showing how wireless radiation impacts the brain. There has been not just memory damage, but behavior problems found, um, hyperactivity in animals and humans. There is significant, the image you're seeing is from Turkish studies where they found decreased and damaged brain cells in animals exposed as uh, adults, uh, or you know, if a rat could be an adult, and prenatally before they were born, then they test them and look into their brains and actually count the brain cells uh, later in life after they're born. Impacts to the blood brain barrier, which can allow more wireless, um, I'm sorry, which can allow more toxic uh, elements into the brain because there's more permeability between the, the, the brain and the, the blood. Altered brain activity was found in a National Institutes of Health study that was done several years ago. And they found that when a cell phone was turned on near the brain, that there was more um, an uptick in the metabolism of glucose in that area. So when it said that, well, we're not affected at all, I mean, there's obviously are going to be effects if there is an exposure that is absorbed into our body and changes into the way our brain functions. Now at the time, um, it was stated that this is what we, with the NIH study actually, um, and you can go look up uh, Dr. Volkov's study and, and watch her talks about it, where she says that she now will keep the phone away from her head uh, and that more research will be done on this issue that we need to do more research and find out what's going on. And as far as I know, I have not seen any more research on this subject coming out of NIH after that study. There was Yale research uh, that looked at animals prenatally exposed. Dr. Hugh Taylor, chief of obstetrics at uh, Yale Medicine and his team found that when pregnant mice were exposed to cell phone radiation, that they had decreased memory and more hyperactivity. And in the press conference uh, for the Baby Safe Project, and please look up the Baby Safe Project that's educating um, pregnant women about reducing exposure to their babies signed by hundreds of doctors and, and educational experts and public health officials. So when he talks about that study, and I remember when it first came out, uh, he said, well, we're going to do more research on this. This is so important. I haven't seen any more research come out of um, Yale looking at, at cell phone radiation to mice on this issue. There has been, I will say, in, in a, with a separate team, study um, looking at thyroid cancer that found increased thyroid cancer in people who use cell phones heavily when they had genetic susceptibilities. And this issue of genetic susceptibility is of course not included in the way we set limits in our governments on this issue. There's research that shows, and this is replicated research actually, that uh, women who are pregnant, uh, who use cell phones more than in the kids, there were more behavior problems. There's several studies on that. There's University of California School of Public Health. <music>